Right, so a couple of test equipment just to demonstrate with these folks uh, for your amplifier circuit. So this is obviously a two-stage amplifier. I think the one in your example is actually a single stage, if I remember right. Um, but the principle is still the same how to test. Uh, so just from the start, I'll just delete out the oscilloscope to begin with. Um, function generator is obviously providing your input function. I get one kilohertz, five millivolt peak for this particular one. And uh, to measure its capabilities, there's two things you pretty much need to do. Uh, I'm going to use a four-channel oscilloscope because I'm going to measure three separate positions in this particular one. So first things first is you want to measure your input signal. So that's the one coming from your function generator. Uh, for mine, I'm going to measure after stage one, just after the capacitor C3. And then out of channel C, I'm also going to measure the output signal, which is coming out after the obviously the second transistor amplifier section stage uh, obviously you connect up the ground and you can open and operate your oscilloscope from there uh, turn on the circuit let it ramp up a little bit a few features going to need to change and alter here so if you're doing any screen prints and so on do not be using the black background hit the reverse button so you actually have the white background instead of crap load of toner in case you need to print anything online if you're obviously just submitting taking screenshots it's a lot easier to read off rather than the black uh, maybe personal preference so i've got three signals i've got the red green and the blue effectively so red's the input one which is the one just about down below i need to change the dials here if you're using the two channel it looks slightly different you just have two boxes in here where you change and chop the the scale part i have a sort of selector dial to, to operate first of all so five volts per division is obviously a little bit too large for this one, so I need to go down the scale, bring it up. Uh, I've changed the uh, frequency as well, and then just try and get it sitting a bit easier to look at. You can press the signal button, uh, or single button rather, to get your waveform sitting somewhat stationary. And you want it to be on AC as well. Go to channel B, five volts per division is probably a little bit large as well. We'll just go down the scale, and again, change it into AC. And we need to run and then go back to the signal again. So it actually changes. And then C, again, it's probably fine for waveform size. And we just need to make sure it's an AC and watch it change over. Now, we can stop our circuit at that point. And we're looking to take a few measurements from it. Now, You've got two cursors here, the red one, which is labeled one, it's probably hard to see, but it's basically called number one, which corresponds to T1 down the bottom here. So wherever I move this cursor, you see the T1 part of it move in time, and T2, you should hopefully just about see nothing changes on it, because right, I'm not moving that cursor. So if I right click on this, I've got trace ID, and I should have three choices, so channel A, B, or C. So it will then go to that particular channel, depending upon the sort of uh, well, measurement that I want from it. So first of all, I, do, I go to channel A, which is my input channel. And then I'm now able to go right click and I can set the values or go to a certain point. For instance, I would like to go to the next Y max and then I've got the right arrow or the left arrow. So I can go to the next peak, basically, either to the right or left of it. So I go to the right. So click on that, it takes me to the peak of that red wave effectively. Now. I can then read off the value. So there's T1. So that is at 167.253 milliseconds. That's from when I turned the circuit on. Channel A is reading 4.999 millivolts, which is what I am expecting because my input signal is 5 millivolts peak. So it's within one, one one thousandth of a millivolt being accurate. Channel B, if I read along horizontally, I get negative 65. 1.360 millivolts now that is where it crosses the other one down here that green line that is not the maximum value even at the negative side because it's not quite exactly in the middle and then channel c it's crossing the blue wave which is the output at 2.834 volts okay <clears throat> now they obviously look roughly the same height because I've changed all of their scales. So channel A, I've got 10 millivolts per division. Channel B, I've got one volt per division. And channel C, I've got five volts per division. 
So what that means is the granulated line here, that there is whatever that value is. So five volts would be up here. For channel B, one volt is that line, the horizontal part. And for my channel A, it's 10 millivolts. Now, if I put them all to the same scale, you'll see how comparable they are instantaneously just by the visual standpoint. So if I maybe increase that to say 50 millivolts, I go B and try and put it to the same. Again, you're well off the scale already here. You can't really mean, read anything. And this one for uh, change around one. Channel C, if I go down to 50 millivolts, you see that the red and the, or sorry, the blue and the green one, they're just not even readable anymore. So that's why we have to be able to change the scales for each of the channels. So you pick the one that's most suitable for you to be able to read the waveform, whether you leave it in the case of like that, where it almost fills the full screen or a little bit smaller, as long as you can read it, it's perfectly fine. So I'll put them in to something a wee bit more sensible to look at, like that there. <clears throat> you take your reading, that's your input waveform. I could either use a different cursor, change it, go to the trace ID, I'll go to channel C this time, which is my output waveform. And if I go to the peak, go to the Y max to the right hand side, it puts it to the peak of the blue waveform, which is my output one. And it is at, so that's blue one is T2. So I am measuring 2.906 volts out. So that's how I get my voltage gain. So I measure what my voltage output is as a, as a peak. I measure what my input voltage is as a peak. And I divide them two numbers. So, so for this particular one, I'll be doing 2.906 divided by 4.999 or 998 as it is times 10 to the minus three, and I end up with voltage gain. And that's how to use the oscilloscope. Now, another factor you're gonna to want to look at is how to measure the frequency response of an amplifier. The frequency response is done via a bold plotter. So you need to go and find the bold plotter, which is, let's find it myself. Where are we at? Bold plotter, what's that, one, two, three, four, Sixth one down is pretty similar connections to be fair. Again, take yourself a ground connection and marry up the two grounds, and then it's pretty straightforward. You take your input and tie it into the input wave. So I'm just going to attach onto this red one here because that red is attached to my input. I'll take the output here and attach it onto my output there. And what happens with this is is it injects, instead of the signal going in that we tell it, which is I think five kilohertz, it now injects from zero hertz all the way up into the tens of megahertz and plots how much the gain is according to frequency. So if I run this, you can actually stop it. You can just about see the line going up there. We need to change some of these values here to make sure we're actually able to see the full thing. So perfectly honest, it's a, it's a game of playing around Make sure you get the. Uh, we don't really need to move that one in anymore. That one probably need to go up to scale to bring that down. Should be fine there. Maybe bring that right hand side in a little bit. So we've now rearranged the frequency response. So what this does is, and I'll just hit the reverse as well here. What this does is allow me to see visually at what frequencies this amplifier works the best. So the, the highest amount of amplitude is the y-axis, by the way, and it's measured in a logarithmic scale known as decibels. So if I right-click on this, go to y-max, it takes me to, it should be roughly the midpoint of this flat bit here. So it tells me at 42.658 kilohertz is my middle point of amplification where I have the maximum amount of amplification. So at this point here, I've got 55 decibels roughly of amplitude, right? Now, that there's the peak point. An amplifier is said to work well in between its bandwidth. You've never heard the phrase bandwidth before. Now, at the cutoff region is where you have the minus three dB point, both at the upper cutoff and the lower cutoff. To do that, 
what you need to do is right click and you want to set your Y value both left and right. You do it in two separate passes. Let's do the one on the right first of all. You have to subtract three from that. That becomes 52 point whatever it is decibels. That takes me to what is called the upper cutoff frequency. So my upper cutoff frequency for this amplifier is 9.254 megahertz. And my lower cutoff frequency then is go to Y value on the left hand side. I've got 198 hertz. So that means my bandwidth is my upper minus my lower, which actually ends up still about 9.5 megahertz. It's a very, very wide bandwidth. Not actually a very good audio amplifier. It's a good amplifier, but not a very good audio amplifier. I've also got a small flat region over here where it amplifies region linear, linearly, uh, although that's not a very wide point there. Its amplifying case is around 16 decibels. So basically what that means is this amplifier works very well in between sort of lower cutoff roughly there to here. Anywhere else, we can't measure very linearly how it's operating. So therefore, we don't specify that it works well in that region. So that's the frequency response and the bulb plotter. So pretty straightforward. You obviously just connect up in and out, make sure you have a ground, run your circuit, and then adjust your settings here to make sure your, your image, your line, comes into obviously the focus of the screen. And then what you should be displaying is your middle point, your upper and your lower cutoff frequency by using your Y-Max and then taking three decibels off each value, both left and right. So there's your upper cutoff frequency, and then you set your Y value to the same amount. But now on the left-hand side of that sort of upper flat tabletop section, and you record these two frequencies, that frequency, and then the upper one as well. So that's how to use that. Any questions on that from the ones in class? Straightforward enough?